And welcome back to our coverage of ONS 2017. We're here with Ned Telev. He's Chief Executive Officer at Nexius. We'll be talking about open source and open technologies and what they enable. And Ned, welcome to the program. Thank you, Abe. Uh, thanks for being here. Now, of course, I'm sure you've heard the same that I've heard over the last couple of days at this particular conference. That's uh, the Open Networking Summit. A lot about data science, a lot about deep learning, machine learning. What's the real impetus behind um, these efforts? It's definitely now the, the trend everybody talking about self-learning, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence. The attempt has been ongoing for many years, of course, but I think it's accelerating now a lot. Um, we're heading towards a network with 10 times the number of sites. We're heading towards billions of devices spitting data, and it's more data than anybody can analyze. Um, I think most of the big data initiatives over the last few years have not yielded the results expected in terms of the uh, monetization. Uh, we do believe that almost everything being done right now in virtualization is a prerequisite towards or actually enables machine learning to take place. Uh, humans have to let go a little bit. We have to move in an autopilot mode and we have to have the right visualization allowing the humans to act as a, a pilot monitoring. Tell me more about sort of where we are maybe on the cycle of allowing automation to automate and, um, and maybe a more of a hands-off approach, letting the network do its job, sort of, are we uh, closer to the start line of that or the finish line of automation? We're certainly uh, at the start. I do say, I do want to say that the start is not just right now, you know, we've seen forms of machine learning for the last 10 years, um, but I do feel there's now a few attempts by certain uh, operators around the world to have uh, human-less, um, you know, analysis, uh, customer care, optimization, but they're certainly at the start. Uh, I do believe the work required to get there uh, is virtualization as a first step, for example, uh, and also probably a lot of the IoT deployment. Um, so there's more things that have to happen before we get the true ROI from machine learning. Tell me about maybe a use case, maybe precision medicine, uh, biotech, uh, automated uh, connected cars or autonomous cars. Uh, which space is mo most interesting to you as we get into this machine learning and automation stage? I do think it's the uh, driverless cars, whether we call it autonomous cars or, uh, but I think that uh, by nature they are mobile, they will be spitting a lot of data, there will be communications vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to the site. Uh, there's still a lot of question marks as to whether the car does need to talk to the network and whether the investments into a low latency network will be required. But I do believe we're heading into many things that are unknown, despite what everybody says. Uh, and I do believe this would be a first in very important use case of uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Tell me again, I, I'm, as a good segue, intelligent networks, maybe I its effect on artificial intelligence and maybe give us another uh, use case or, 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 or end use. Sure, I, I do think also it's uh, about um, the amount of data that you know, uh, would be thousands of percents what it is today. So even artificial intelligence and virtual reality uh, I'm sorry, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. I do think that to support that, um, you need first to have a network closer to the edge, and I do think the amount of data we're going to be having will require definitely machine learning to process. Ned, how much of your business now is really focused on the application of these technologies, AR, VR, AI, uh, deep learning, machine learning, rather than trying to make your customers understand the functionality of the network itself? Yeah. It's increasingly, um, towards the applications. So uh, most of the operators, the only growth right now is in enterprises. It is in the applications of driverless cars, AI, um, uh, AR, a VR. It is also in telemedicine. So um, I think no discussion of technology can be taken as a siloed from the applications. It is also right now with IoT, the economics are not there yet. So the technology has to support um, you know, much lower cost per connection and has to uh, have different way of thinking about uh, sessions, opening sessions with the devices, and also how to process the amount of analytics it will generate. So no discussions that technology can happen anymore in siloed or isolated from the applications. Now of course, uh, the network virtualization space is getting a bit crowded. You have carriers, enterprise players, now you have application developers uh, that are coming into, into the space as well. Nexus is positioned uh, in, in a unique space right now to really maybe uh, mitigate all these areas. Can you kind of describe that to your positioning in, in, the, in the industry? Sure, uh, I believe uh, virtualization is very important to reduce CapEx maybe, to reduce OPEX absolutely. 
So I believe that uh, virtualization is not the end goal. I do think it's a very important requirement to make the network more computable and to allow things like artificial intelligence to uh, take place. Um, so uh, I think today there's a lot of dependency on closed box proprietary technologies. And I do think that having a vendor neutral approach uh, towards virtualization is important. Some operators are at 50% network functions virtualized, others are just starting. I do think it's important to realize that this is a very important prerequisite before AI. Of course, interoperability, especially uh, in the cloud or in cloud technologies is integral. Um, tell us about the importance of interoperability, but also if you could tie it back to where we are now, we're at the Open Networking Summit and the open source community. Sure. Uh, interoperability is important, but I do think in the telecom world it's uh, overused and it uh, reminds me a bit of the old school, where they make it a lot as a pre-requirement. I do think we're heading into a world of uh, continuous integration and continuous development, CI/CD, and I do think that integration has to happen you know, on the go. So a shift in mindset of the operators in particular, and that's what probably we get a lot from ONS, it is a shift in mindset um, as to how we deploy and integrate. Now, of course, there's some technology that we should be looking forward to. Uh, maybe even this time next year, uh, I'm sure Nexus will be at, at these open source or Linux Foundation events. Um, can you maybe point to a couple of uh, areas that maybe Nexus is working on? Sure, uh, first is uh, network in a box. We believe with open source uh, components, open platforms, we believe that the way uh, connectivity is built will be very, very different. Uh, integrated core and RAN. I know there's a lot of discussions about VRAN and XRAN and RAN in the cloud, but we were looking at really the RAN and the cloud and the ability to deploy 10x, 100x the number of sites really at the edge of the network. That's going to be very important. The second part is the entire management orchestration and automation in the way we manage these networks. It is uh, maybe in, a, in the uh, last generation we talked a lot about SON, self-optimizing networks. Now we're going to look at AI-based solutions to optimize a network that will be very different than the way it is right now in terms of number of sites and the virtualized components. Now I do want to mention uh, there is a bit of a history between TIA and Nexus. It was just a little bit less than two years ago that uh, you received, a, or uh, John Donovan and Susan Johnson over at AT&T awarded uh, Nexus with a supplier award and that was at a, a TIA annual event. I just want to mention that really quickly. What was that experience? It was actually just last summer and um, Yes, the IA was uh, in conjunction with the AT&T supplier um, uh, conference. And um, I know I actually I was able to introduce John Donovan for his keynote speech, and he mentioned Nexus in his 20 minute speech, congratulating us. And the next day, Susan Johnson uh, from Supply Chain gave us the award. So I do have definitely a soft spot from the last TIA event I sat down at. Oh, we hope you, uh, you attend our event in June at the, called the Connectivity Jam. So we'd love to have Nexus there. Thank you, Abe. All right, Ned, thanks for your time. Thanks so much. And for all of our coverage here at ONS 2017, you can go to tinow.org. So long. <laughs>